Hey friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my August Pamela's eyeshadows update. I have a couple pans to share. There are a few more pans I hit than what I'm going to be sharing, but unfortunately some of those other pans I hit come from other panning projects, so I cannot share that progress just yet. But make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of my panning content. And with that, let's jump into the update. I feel like I don't normally explain this project a lot and I get a ton of new viewers and subscribers from each of these updates. So if you are new around here, hi, hope you enjoy panning and using what you own type of content. This is a panning project started by Alexi here on YouTube. I don't believe she's currently active, but I will link her channel down below if you're interested in seeing her version of this project. Pretty much everyone that does it though curates it to themselves and how they prefer to consume their makeup. I personally randomize five shades in my collection and then pick one myself, a shade that I'm interested in working on, and I use them up until I either use it 20 times or until I hit pan. The ultimate goal is to hit pan, but for stubborn shades that might take me forever to hit pan. We've had some that have been in here for 80 plus uses. I do reserve the right to roll out after 20 uses if I don't think I can hit pan in a relatively decent amount of time. I'm very excited to share today's update, so let's jump in. I'm gonna be starting with the shades that have been in my rotation the longest and then working my way down to the newest shades. I have this like weird hair sticking out of my bun. So the first shade I have to talk about comes from my ColourPop Hocus Pocus palette and the shade we've been working on is Hello Salem. And as you can see, Hello Salem is this mauve shade up at the top. I was able to hit a pretty decent sized pan this month. I am very proud of that. I used the shade a total of four times this month for a grand total of 27 uses in the project. It took me 26 uses to hit pan, so I used it one additional time after just to really kind of make that pan noticeable because sometimes I feel like as soon as you hit pan it's like a little baby pan and you use it one or two more times and it looks like a decent sized pan. So I did use it an additional time. I'm very happy to have this palette rolling out. It has been in since the intro. I think this is our last remaining shade from the intro. I've been pairing it a lot with my Naked Cherry palette from my A to Z project pan. I find this shade looked really good in berry looks. I used it primarily as a transition shade, so I would put it down all over my crease before going in with some deeper pinks, berries, or mauves to really deepen up the look. And it was just a really nice, easy to blend out shade. I'm very happy to finally have pan in this shade, but that's not all. Let's go ahead and move into my next shade. Shade number two comes from my Natasha Denona Love palette. And the shade I've been working on is the shade Giving, which is this pink right here. And as you can see, I was able to hit pan in Giving as well. I used this shade a total of four times again this month for a grand total of 39 uses in the project. It took me 39 uses to hit pan, so I did not use it any additional time times and I'm very happy with how that pan looks. It was definitely a slow burning shade. I've been using it very consistently for the past, I don't know, three months now. I took this palette traveling with me and I used this shade every single chance I got. Thankfully, it actually worked really well with the berry shades I'm working on in my A to Z project pan, as well as Hello Salem. I felt like I was able to use them all together, which is why you see that these shades had so many uses compared to some of the other shades I'm gonna talk about. But I'm very happy with the progress. I now have two pans in this palette. Palette. The Natasha Denona palettes are very difficult to hit pan on, so fingers crossed I don't roll in another shade from a Natasha palette because I definitely need a break. They thankfully are very worth the money. I think these palettes are like $65 and this shade lasted me like 40 uses. Thankfully, you're getting your money's worth, but unfortunately for my panning projects, it's definitely a slow burn. I used this one on my lid. When I first rolled it into the project, I was using it as an all over lid shimmer color. As I moved on through the project, I discovered my favorite way to use this was actually doing like a berry crease with a white or tan shade on the lid and then popping this on top just for a very natural sparkle. The brush I primarily used with this shade was my Sigma E54. Obviously this has blue because I used it on my eyes today, but it's just this very flat brush and I was able to dig it into the pan and I think that's why I was able to create such a big pan in here is because I was using such a flat dense brush but overall very excited to roll this one out that is all for the pans now let's move on to the progress in my other shades the next shade comes from my other color pop hocus pocus palette this is the witching hour palette i think the first one is the gather brown sisters palette the shade i've been working on is fur black as black which is this deep teal shade i use this one today to kind of smoke out my liner just a touch i find that's my favorite way to use this shade 
I used this shade a total of three times this month. Last update, I'm pretty sure I used it. I just didn't document it. So I was true to my documentation and said I had zero uses, but I'm pretty sure I used it more than three times. The way I've been using this is primarily how I'm wearing it today. I just kind of smoke it out underneath my winged liner and it just kind of creates a nice soft shadow, especially in this inner part. I've been using this teal shade an insane amount of times. So I did this look today as well as a look I did yesterday that was more blue green. Fortunately, my looks had some staining, so I'm stuck wearing blue green looks for a couple days until I don't have anywhere to be and don't have to wear makeup. But overall, I've really enjoyed doing these blue looks. I feel like it's a nice change because now that I'm finally starting to hit pan on those berry tones, I feel like I can finally breathe and like do more than just pink looks. I love pink. Pink is my favorite color. Obviously, I have pink everywhere in my house. But I feel like I've been wearing pink eyeshadow nonstop for almost four months now, and I'm kind of over it. So I'm very happy that I've been able to use some more fun colors and I'm hoping that in the coming months I will also be able to play with some fun colors and fingers crossed that my new roll-ins do me justice. <laughs> Overall this one is definitely going to be another slow burn shade but I'm very happy with the progress. In the close-up photos there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in the pan at the moment but we're, we're slowly getting there. The next shade I have to share comes from my ColourPop Frozen 2 Anna palette, my favorite sarcastic palette ever. And the shade that I've been working on is Adventure. So as you can see, I already have three pans in this palette and Adventure has been our latest roll-in. I use the shade a total of three times this month for a grand total of five uses in the project. I did have a little bit of a crumble in the corner of this shade already prior to rolling it in. So I'm kind of cheating and just been focusing my efforts in that little corner. This shade I discovered is very crumbly. The three times I used the shade this month, I used it as a liner shade and I used an angled liner brush, really concentrated it in that little dippy corner and then smoked out my wings using it primarily with like the berry looks or maybe a neutral look. Overall, I feel like I could hit pan on it pretty soon. However, I do feel kind of bad because whenever I use this shade, because it does have a crumble in it, every time I use this, even if I use the smallest detailist, teeny tiny blending brush, whatnot, I feel like I get a ton of crumble in the pan. And so I feel like the progress I've made isn't from my genuine usage. It is from the shade breaking on me. So I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, at least I'll hit pan, but I'm also kind of just crumbling the shadows. So it doesn't really feel like I'm accomplishing much, but I am going to continue to work on it. I feel like in the next month I could have pan. I'm very close. These pans, as you can see, are, are somewhat deep, but this, this little crumble section is very deep. So I feel like it is not far-fetched that I will have pan in this by next update if I don't crumble the entire shade first. The next shade comes from my ColourPop and Kathleen Lights, the Zodiac palette, and it is the shade, the Pisces, which is this bottom aqua shade. The Pisces is one of the shades on my lid today. I'll share the other palette I used in just a second, but I don't feel like there's much disturbance in the pan. Typically with shimmer shades, I feel like you can use it like three or four times and it's starting to look used already. This still looks exactly how it looks when I rolled it in. It is very pigmented. It stains fairly badly, which is why I've been having to wear blue looks for the past couple days. But I am enjoying having it in. It's actually a lot of fun. And had I not rolled this shadow in, I don't think I would have realized how much I like to do these blue aqua looks. It is very, very pretty. I've actually been combining the shadow a lot with my Nomad Paradise palette. I've been using the blues and greens in here, which is how I did this look, as well as the other looks I'm including pictures of. Pretty much every time I use this palette, I used the Paradise palette. I combined it with this shade, the aqua shade. Today, I even went into the blues. The other day I did one with the greens right here, Tiki and Fish, and overall I really enjoy it. I've been primarily, like I said, using it as a lid shade, and that uh, is probably how I'm going to continue to use it. That's not true. I used it once as an inner corner shade with a berry look, and I got a ton of compliments on that, but I just find that using it as like an all-over lid shade is going to help me work through it faster, so I'm going to continue to focus on using it as an all-over color, but so far so good. I'm enjoying the progress. This one is staying in. And the last shade in my current rotation it comes from my Milk Cosmetics Amore Mariposas palette and the shade I've been working on is Nueva Vida which is this brick red shade right on the end. 
I have used this one a total of four times this month for a grand total of four uses in the project and there is not much disturbance in this yet. I'm just barely starting to blur the butterfly embossing very slightly. I use this with my Berry Lux as a deepening up very outer corner shade. Normally I will go in with a brown or a black to deepen up looks, but I've been using this just in the very outer corner to smoke it out or deepen it up. I feel like this again is going to be a slow burn shade. The melt shades are so very pigmented and of course with the embossing you have an extra layer of product on top. So I'm hoping that I will at least be able to hit my 20 use goal within the next month or so so I can roll this one out. But for now we're sitting at four uses. So now it is time to choose our roll-ins. The shade giving was actually the hand selected shade that I picked a while back so I will be selecting the shade to take its place but we do have one shade that is going to be randomly generated. I have my google number generator pulled up and I'm going to quickly randomize our shade and the shade number I got is 931. So if I go over to my spreadsheet let me scroll down to 931. It's gonna be a ColourPop shade. <laughs> okay. The shade 931 comes from my ColourPop The Child palette. Why do I keep rolling in all of my limited edition stuff? But the shade I rolled in is Little Frog, which is this green shade at the bottom. It's just a very pretty olive. I think it'll go really well with some of the other shades. In fact, I'm curious to see if I can create a look using Pisces and Little Frog. I feel like it'll go very nicely with some of the other colors, but my color story is definitely starting to get a little wild. <laughs> so this is our color story so far. I still have my hand selected shade and I'm debating which one I wanna use because I have a couple ideas. But I think I'm just gonna go with a tried and true easy shade and I think I'm gonna go into Tempura from my Soft Glam ABH palette and use that as my final shade. I already have a fairly big dip and I'm just scared that with the current color story that it's going to be very difficult to have pan in my next update and I want to make sure my update is exciting and that is one that I'm fairly close to pan and the hand selected shade honestly can be a gimme shade because it's my project. But this is the color story we are working on. My two roll-ins are Little Frog from the Baby Yoda palette and Tempura from Soft Glam. And that is all for today's update friends. If you have any ideas on how to pair these shades in a way that I could probably use you know several if not most of the shades in a look please let me know. This one is definitely stumping me a little bit. I definitely think I can use the two blues and the two purples together. Maybe I can use the green with the blues. Tempura is obviously going to be fairly easy to roll into anything, any look, but that is all for today's video, friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. Let me know if you guys are doing this project as well. I'd love to follow anyone else that's doing this. It's so fun to keep up with everyone's projects, honestly, and with that, I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye, friends.